Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about fate map. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So fate map is a diagram of a blastula. It indicates the fate of each cell or region at a later stage of development. So there are different methods of fate map construction. Observing living embryo, use of vital dye, radioactive leveling, fluorescent dye, genetic marking. We will talk about them one by one. First is observing living embryo. The embryos of some invertebrates are transparent. They have few daughter cells that remain close to one another. For them, it is possible to look through the microscope and trace the descendants of a particular cell. Edwin G. Conklin in 1905 performed this kind of study in the tunicate etc. where the different cells contain different pigments. For example, the muscle forming cells always have a yellow color. Limitations of this technique? Cells should be transparent. So that is always not possible, right? And cells should be less in number. Okay. Next process is use of vital dye. Most embryos are not transparent. Hence, it is not easy to see them directly through microscope. Okay. Vote in 1929 used vital stain to color the cells without killing them. Using vital stain, he traced the fate of different areas of amphibian eggs. Example of vital stain? Jena's green, Nile blue, neutral red, Bismarck brown, etc. Limitations of this technique? Dye gets diluted over many cell divisions. So actually, once multiple cell division occurs, many cells get generated. The dye we apply in few cells of embryo get diluted in the new daughter cells after many generations. So here is the embryo. We apply the stain and after some time the tadpole shows stained brain. That means this part of embryo forms the brain of the tadpole. Next process is radioactive leveling. This technique makes one area of the embryo radioactive. A donor embryo is taken and grown in a solution containing radioactive thymidine. This thymidine base is subsequently incorporated into the DNA of the dividing donor embryo. A second embryo is also taken which acts as the host embryo. It is grown under normal condition. The region of interest from the host embryo is cut off and replaced by a radioactive graft from the donor embryo. The cells that are radioactive will be the descendants of the cells of the graft and are observed by autoradiography. Limitations of this technique. Radioactivity gets diluted over many cell divisions. Next process is fluorescent dyes. Fluorescent dyes are micro-injected into one or more cells. All descendants of the injected cells are leveled distinctly under a fluorescent microscope. Example of fluorescent dye, fluorescent dextrans. Limitations of this technique, fluorescence gets diluted over many cell divisions. Next process is genetic marking. This process permanently marks cells and follows their fates. 
It creates embryo which contains cells with different genetic constitutions. The gene of interest is inherited by the descendants of the marked cell. Example, chick quail chimeras are made by grafting embryonic quail cells inside a chick embryo while a chick is still in the egg. Chicks and quail embryos develop in a similar manner and the grafted quail cells become integrated into the chick embryo and construct the various organs. The chick that hatches will have quail cells in particular sites depending on where the graft was placed. Limitations Low efficiency of introducing the gene in the cell. So the gene introduction efficiency is low here. This is all about today's lecture. I hope you liked the lecture. Thank you for watching my video.